After noticing the distinctive preen gland tufts feathers of the Eclectus parrot, we decided to examine those of other parrots. The purpose of our study was to list the tufts feathers characteristics of a variety of parrot species in order to investigate a possible link between the colour and length of preen gland tufts feathers and level of feather maintenance contributed by the preen gland. If a link existed, then the feather maintenance requirements of each species could possibly be predicted. This information could benefit treatment and prevention plans for birds recovering from feather destruction behaviour associated with inadequate feather maintenance. For example, eclectus parrots that rely upon preen gland oil for proper feather maintenance would be encouraged to bathe each day to stimulate preening behaviour, whereas Amazon parrots that have no preen gland would not benefit from this instruction. The feathers of birds require frequent maintenance to keep them functional. These behaviours, particularly bathing and preening, are nearly universal in birds, although their expression and function vary across species. For parrots, we describe feather maintenance as four distinct behaviours, bathing, cleaning, preening and grooming. Birds bathe in still water, rain or dust when they have a need to clean their feathers. Cleaning is aided by bathing and or the production of powder down. Preening is the act of applying preen gland oil to the feathers. The action is considered to be distinct from cleaning and other grooming behaviours. In captivity, preening is most intensive in species that seek daily baths. In other species, preening is an intermittent daily behaviour. Grooming is the least active form of feather maintenance. It is an irregular behaviour that includes light cleaning, tidying of feathers and ruffling. Preen gland oil and powder down feathers play major roles in feather maintenance. Most parrot families have powder down feathers and functional preen glands. Broadly speaking, those species that produce powder down feathers and have functional preen glands use the self-cleaning aspects of powder down and protective qualities of preen gland oil, particularly its antibacterial, waterproofing and conditioning functions to maintain their feathers in prime condition. The preen gland is hidden beneath the tail contour feathers and can be difficult to locate in parrots. The tough feathers are found by lifting the tail contour feathers upwards, then looking cranially towards the base of the tail flight feathers. White tufts feathers are typically more visible than melanised ones. The preen gland is located dorsally over the caudal vertebrae at the base of the tail. It has two storage lobes in parrots with ducts leading from the secretory tissue to a nipple-like papilla. Its sebaceous secretion is expelled under beak or head pressure during the preening process through two orifices at the end of the papilla onto a tuft of circlet feathers described as tufts feathers. Preen gland tufts feathers have been described as specialised miniaturised plumulaceous down feathers. The calamus of each feather is firmly embedded into the end of the papilla. The tufts feathers have elongated nodal barbules with multiple segmented prongs along their length. This type of feather cannot form veins. Instead the barbules clump together in an organised fashion to produce a weak like feather tuft that holds the waxy secretion of the preen gland. The nodal prongs increase the oil carrying capacity of the tuft. The prongs help to create a fan-like spatial arrangement to each tuft's feather. This configuration retains capillary action and provides a large surface area for economic application of preen gland oil. We used 40 parrot species from various continents, climatic zones, natural habitats, life history and wild diets. The tufts feathers were examined in situ and after manual extraction. They were categorised by these observations into one of four groups, absent, red, melanised and white. The white group was further subdivided. The first subdivision contained species with long tufts feathers proportional to body size. The second included those species with tufts feathers of regular length. Preen gland tufts feathers were observed in all studied groups except those species belonging to the genus Amazona. The other species examined had 9 to 13 tufts feathers observable without magnification. Microscopically, 
Although the tufts feathers were structurally similar, they showed some variation in form between species. For example, the tufts feathers of the blue and gold macaw were spherical in form, whereas those of Eclectus parrots were fan-like. Amazona, which are representative of the first group, had no tufts feathers because they lack a functional preen gland. Red tufts feathers were found in Galars. This was the only parrot species in this study to have red preen gland tufts. A circular arrangement of red semiplumes was observed surrounding the preen gland. The significance of the red tufts feather and the specialised semiplumes that surround the preen gland is not yet known. Galars live across vast dry areas of central Australia. They have a highly developed powder down bed and regularly dust bath in the wild. The red feathering associated with the preen gland of Galars may be related to or determined by the harsh conditions of central Australia. The third group contains six species with melanized tufts feathers. Melanized tufts feathers suggest these species preen more frequently than those with white preen gland tufts. We consider preen gland oil to be essential for the proper plumage maintenance of these parrots. This does not necessarily mean that these species are totally reliant upon preen oil for feather maintenance. For example, the tufts feathers of red-tailed black cockatoos are partially melanized. They also have extensive beds of powder down feathers. The final group includes 30 species with white tufted preen glands. This group was divided into species with long tufts feathers proportional to body size and those with regular length tuft feathers. We contend that parrot species with long white tufts feathers proportional to body size are likely to be exposed to moisture in some form. Notably, the Australian species in this subdivision are all grass parrots that forage on the ground in habitats with heavy seasonal dewfall. Long tufts feathers may suggest these species gain benefits from the waterproofing qualities of preen oil. The plumage of these grassland species is frequently exposed to moisture whilst they forage amongst wet grass. Long tufts feathers provide these birds with the potential to increase the water repellent qualities of their feathers when seasonally required. The white tufts feathers of red rump parrots, which weigh 60 to 65 grams, were the longest proportional to body size of any bird within this final study group. In summary, most parrots in the study group had white tufts feathers of regular length. Some parrots, such as budrigars and red rump parrots, had long white tufts feathers proportionate to body size. Black cockatoos, crimson rosellas and eclectus parrots, amongst others, had melanized tufts feathers. Eclectus parrots had proportionally the longest tufts feathers of any parrot in the study group, whereas galahs had the shortest, which were red. In conclusion, this pilot study suggests a possible link between the colour and length of preen gland tufts feathers and level of feather maintenance contributed by the preen gland. If this link does exist, then measures that enhance preening behaviour notably organising mealtime routines that encourage more frequent bathing opportunities, should be included as part of treatment or prevention plans for birds such as Eclectus parrots that are more prone to feather destruction behaviour associated with dry feathers than other parrots that produce powder down as well as preen gland oil for proper feather maintenance. Dry feathers are frequently implicated with feather destruction episodes in Eclectus parrots.